It being 7 o'clock, I'll call the order at the meeting, uh, Board of Selectmen meeting for Thursday, February 18th, 2021. First order of business is public comment. Seeing none, we'll move on to review of minutes. We have minutes for the meeting of February 3rd, 2021. What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the minutes as presented. I'll second that. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Um, next up, Senior Center Director, for uh, the reason we're here Thursday night instead of Wednesday is we had a, a, a follow-up clinic for some of our senior citizens to receive COVID vaccines, and Deb Goodsell's here to update us on how well it went. Absolutely. Welcome. Thank you for having me here again. Um, the last time we met three weeks ago, I told you, hold tight, the vaccine's coming, it's coming. Of course, I had no idea that it was coming the next morning. Um, at that meeting, I had the privilege of meeting Danielle Fahey, who is our new Clinton Housing Authority director. And the next morning, she called me, came over to the center, and she had been approached about having a clinic, and she wanted to know if I wanted to host it. So we got in touch with the um, woman from UMass, Monica Lowell, and she wanted to meet with us on Friday night. So uh, Town Administrator Mike Ward, Health Agent John McNally, and I met with her and she approved the town hall as a site for a vaccination and told us she'd be here on Wednesday with right. 60 doses. So we pulled a report from our senior center computer. These are people over 85 in Clinton. So we started calling down our oldest seniors and we filled up all 60 slots. So most of those were all in their 90s. In fact, in the last two clinics, we had four 99-year-olds, wow. which was really great. Um, so she informed us that that was going to happen and we figured the best way to do that was like I said to start with the older residents and work our way down. So after we pulled the report we spent all day Saturday and all day Sunday calling these people and setting it up and then I just want to remind everybody too um, my information in my computer is only as good as we put in. Exactly. So if we don't have your phone number or current data call the center and give it to us and I had a lot of seniors say, well, I'm not a member. If you're a Clinton right. senior, you're a member. We're a town department. It's not a club. You are a member. That's a great point. So just so they know that as well. Um, so Monday and Tuesday, the staff pre-registered all 60 of them, which saved a lot of time and energy when we had the clinic here. While all this was happening, Dr. Broach, who heads the, the mobile clinics, approached our fire chief, Mike Lutz, about training our firefighters EMTs to be able to administer vaccines for our home patients. So that was being done at our first clinic. So on February 10th, we were able to vaccinate 60 of our oldest residents, most in their 90s, and they all left with big smiles on their faces because not just the vaccine, but it gave them hope. Sure. So it was, you know, they were, a lot of them said, I can't wait till this is done so I can see my grandchildren. So that was really sweet to see that. Um, at the conclusion of the clinic, Dr. Broach offered to come back again. So he offered us 80 more doses. So we got back on the, in the list here, started working it. We were able to sign up not only 80, 80, but 12 that were the home. So homebound people. So our EMTs along with a nurse or a doctor went to their homes and were able to vaccinate them. Um, the process moved along really swiftly and partially because they were all pre-registered right. by the staff at the center. Each clinic was two hours. So they vaccinated 60 people the first week and 80 the second week in two hours. Um, we were very pleased that while making the phone calls, um, when we were checking off this, a lot of our seniors had already gotten the vaccine in other locations. Uh, the VA, their primary care, some had gone down to Gillette. So when I look at this, this pile of um, names, most of them are all set already. So between the clinics we had and their self-finding um, locations, we've got a good jump on this. Great. So that was really nice. Um, so, and I would just like to also thank Danielle Fahey, because like I said, had she not come over that morning, had we not met the night before here, I don't think any of this would have happened. Um, I also want to thank you guys for allowing us to be here at the town hall. Mike for setting it up and coming over and meeting with us and everything. The Board of Health, um, especially Tom Bonsey, he was here for the first clinic and was helping them in and out the doors and the wheelchairs and all of that, which was great. 
um, the senior center staff, who was fabulous, as always, um, members of the fire department, especially Chief Lutz. And I just want to add that Chief Lutz is not just a friend like right now. He's a friend of the seniors every day. He has helped us in so many cases with so many of our seniors. It's just really um, wonderful to have him as one of our advocates. Um, and oh, I'd be amiss without Mike Canala for all the setting up, taking down, cleaning up, and being here for whatever we needed. And Dr. Broach and his team, they were amazing as well. He did send an email that basically said, the partnership has been amazing, and my thanks to the town and Chief Lutz for their support. Thank you all so much. Take care. So um, right now, there are no more clinics planned. Right. Um, our phones have been ringing off the hook because, of course, yesterday they opened it up to the 65 plus or the two comorbidities. So, um, but there are none planned for the future. Um, if he does end up getting more vaccines and coming back to, to do this again, we'll start with the same thing. We're going to start with the oldest and work our way down. Right. So. And so that's why it's so important, as you said before, if, if you haven't reached out to the senior center in a while, please do so and make sure yeah. they know where you are and what you need, because we're trying to help and we will in every case possible, but we and, can't if we don't know where you are. And some people have called us and said, well, my mother's 86, why didn't right. you call? Well, there was no phone number in, right. in our system. Right. So it is very important that our records are updated. So yes, absolutely call us. Let's update those. Awesome. So. Any other questions or anything? Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, Deb, what about the, the, the 80 and the 60 that got their first shot? Will there be clinics to follow up for their second round? Yes, yes. So oh. the first clinic will come back on February 10th. Right. So they'll come back here and get their second dose. Um, and then the second clinic, those 80, will come back on the 17th to receive their second dose. So they're going to be able to come right back here, and the home patients, they will go to their homes. And, and do that. One, one other thing, yeah. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I would hesitate to try to thank all the people involved. You just read off a list of everybody involved, and yeah. they were all outstanding. I, was, I brought my father here for his shot, um, and everybody was uh, amazing and outstanding. But I do want to touch base on the, uh, the Housing Authority and the Housing Authority Director, because for a long, long time, it's treated it we've we've been sort of at um, two different pathways and the idea that we're collaborating and that the housing authority is part of the community and, and part of the town of Clinton it, it, this was a great example of that and yeah she I, and I, I appreciate have been in touch. That, her and the housing authority for, for help making this happen yeah I think she's gonna make a great addition to our team I really do she's been in touch with us on several occasions um, she's looked forward to working together with for more housing for the seniors, um, you know, updating the housing they have. Um, I think she's going to be a great addition. I think it's great. Yeah, I agree. Anybody else? Mike, just just while we're still talking COVID, it's uh, our first responders get their second doses. Yes, yes. Our first responders uh, last week had received their second dose, so they're all set. Uh, and I think as uh, the senior center director indicated that in March there'll be second rounds for those that receive them here. Um, but I think as Deb mentioned, you know, just the, the pure joy and I think like Deb said, the, the feeling that, you know, that there's hope that we're going to come out of this, I think for the seniors, it was amazing to see the people coming in and out. It was great, so efficiently and well run, but that they had the ability to come somewhere familiar that they didn't have to travel, they didn't have to go to some, some place where they were scared, that they could get it done here. It was great. So what I want to do on behalf of the town or behalf of the board is to send a letter to UMass thanking them, but also to copy the governor and, and let the governor know. I know they're trying to you know, work to these regional facilities and trying to get massive amount of people, and I understand that. But I think to just show uh, the governor and the state that how effective and, and, and how meaningful it is to communities to have it done by their you know local local people so uh, it was just a wonderful thing and uh, you know cross our fingers they can come back I know there's no plan for it right now but uh, we'd welcome them with open arms if they could so. absolutely I said my best moment was in the beginning of the first clinic two of our 99 years olds came in at the same time and one of them was just like, Mary, the other one's like, Anne, and they were just like, it was like, so they were so happy to see each other. 
Um, a lot of the seniors, it was, it was great having them. You know, they were all six feet apart, all masked, but they were able to see each other. Um, and it just brought them, it uplifted them. It was just like I said, they left with smiles yeah. and it was, it was great. It was great. I can't say enough good things about it. We've asked a lot of people, um, you know, at this level, at the, at the state level, at the federal level, a lot of sacrifice has been made over the past year, but we are heading in the right direction. The numbers from the state tonight are down to where they were at the beginning of November. We're at 5%. The schools are starting to reopen. Uh, you know, it, I know it seems like every day is the same, but we're chipping away at it. And so yeah. hopefully people can just stay strong for a little while longer. We'll get these vaccines out. Spring will be here and somewhat back to normal. So thank you for everything you did for pulling this together, Mike, and everybody here. Um, it's, it's really a great step in the right direction and, and a sign of what we can do if we pull together as a, as a town. I think it's the whole town worked together so beautifully. It really did. Just every department, yeah. every, I mean, everybody just was so cooperative. And I think it was, it was just, it shows the great town. It really does. It does. Thank you. So all set. Have a great Thank night. You, Good night. Thank you. Mr. Duffy. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good Welcome. evening. Uh, with your permission, I can take off my Please. mask if that's all right. Okay, thank you. Uh, that was wonderful to hear, by the way. Uh, congratulations and thanks to Deb, uh, who forgot to thank herself. Uh, that was really <laughs> terrific to hear. Um, I'm here with something much more mundane to talk about uh, a state program and steps we may want to take to um, prepare ourselves better, uh, put ourselves in a better position to apply for funds in the future. Um, I, in your packet, there should be a memo included that briefly describes the state's new uh, grant application tool. It's called the One Stop for Growth. Um, the state is consolidating the applications for 10 different grant programs into one application, one common application. This, this an application will also refer out to another 13 different uh, other programs. And I mentioned the, in the memo that we've received in the aggregate about $3.4 million from these programs over the last five years. So we are intimately involved with them. Um, the one stop effectively is the state's new portal for grants that are intended to advance the community's economic development goals or its housing development goals. Um, and we'll be following the, the, the guidelines and do what we need to do. But there is one opportunity that I bring before you tonight, which is the opportunity to submit expressions of interest to the, the Commonwealth. Um, the, the Commonwealth wants to be a better partner and advisor to the communities as they go to um, kind of put together the jigsaw puzzle uh, of grants and funds that are available to, to further a particular goal. Um, and the expressions of interest are an opportunity for us to describe to the state what our economic development or housing goals are. Um, so what I've done, and, and rather than have just me do it, I thought I'd bring them to you guys to get some endorsement and some, some feedback and maybe some modification. Uh, in the memo, I've included some of the goals that we've been working on over the past number of years. A lot of these have already been backed up with, with studies and, and, and act actions we've already taken. But um, just to briefly describe the, these goals, um, I should mention too, the one stop is very project oriented. This, these, are goal, these are grants that are intended to either result in a building or infrastructure. That's that, that's what they're that's what they're looking to create. Um, but as uh, is, is potential expressions of interest, um, we they're not required, but they may be helpful in terms of our applications. Um, one expression of interest may be in downtown revitalization. I think we all understand that we've been working on that for a number of years, and it remains one of our our goals. Um, another one would be the the Rock Best is super non property. Uh, we're already using money that is now captured in this one stop program. Uh, the Brownfields Fund to uh, further the developability of that parcel. And we want to continue make an expression of interest about that, I believe. In the past, we've identified the uh, old big old spinning mills, the old uh, Main Street Corridor from Taika up to uh, Power Breakers um, as an area of interest. Um, there are develop preliminary development plans under, on, underway on that site for uh, housing development. Uh, but that is, um, as you all can observe, a fairly derelict stretch of road. It's a lot of inventory of space that we'd like to see um, revitalized. And I personally think that uh, quite apart from the benefit of uh, new investment, um, that stretch is kind of so blighted, we don't even think of it in our mental map, map mm -hmm. of Clinton. But if it was 
as beautiful as it could be, I think it would change not only our perception of the town, but the perception of others, of what that's worth. Um, we have previously identified, uh, in 2013, we identified the old uh, Bates Sand Pits south of the high school as a priority development area. Um, there are 26 acres of land in Clinton that is currently landlocked by, railroad, by the railroad tracks. Um, that's, it's industrially zoned. Um, after that, our next largest developable site is Supernaut, which is eight acres in a brownfield. So if there was a way to unlock this property and perhaps work with the uh, town of Sterling, which has well over 80 acres, maybe 100 acres of similarly zoned land immediately adjacent, um, that would require a lot of coordination, a lot of, of coordination with the, the um, MWRA and the national and um, the railroad companies. Um, it's a long haul kind of a project, but the opportunity that may may rest there is, is something that was worth working for, I believe, and we want to express that um, as an economic development goal for us. Um, and then finally, another project that I'm putting on here, which is of a, a significant order order of magnitude smaller, is gene stowing. Um, only because the state has announced a new program called the Underutilized Properties Program. Um, it makes funds available for the rehabilitation of blighted properties, provided that it meets the town's downtown revitalization goals or economic development goals. And we've already already done a lot of work that has identified genes as that kind of a project. So uh, while it's an order of magnitude smaller, this is kind of a little bit cynical and tactical inclusion in this list um, so that it might be queued up for either brownfields funds or underused, underutilized properties funds in this new program. Um, this list doesn't address housing. Um, housing is something that in the past um, has not risen to the level of, of kind of planning concern in Clinton. We, we currently have a flexible um, and re robust housing stock. We've seen steady investment in housing over the last many years. Um, if housing is becoming a concern, it is uh, both in the areas of, in my opinion, in the areas of senior housing and in the affordability of housing. Um, for 20 years, I've lived in this town and you'd look at the rents that were, um, that properties were, that apartments were fetching and it remained a very affordable town. I think we all understand that it is less so. Um, in one respect, that's great that property values are going up, um, and it's, but it's great only if you're not one of those people who has difficulty finding an apartment now. So um, we may want to think about rounding out our thoughts on housing and our community goals. We may think about applying for funds to do a housing development plan um, or some other kind of meaningful deep dive into what we desire and what we can accomplish in, in the area of housing. Um, the, um, these expressions of interest are due on April 2nd, deadlines April 2nd, so we have about six weeks before we put them together. I'm not necessarily asking for your definitive endorsement of this list of um, expressions of interest, but I'm putting it for you tonight and I'd be happy to revisit, with the, revisit it with you at either of your next two meetings, either or both of your next two meetings, if it is your desire. Great. Any questions from the board? I do have a, one question. Yes. Uh, as far as the, um, you had mentioned about Gene's Auto and, and this program, what about if, if there's uh, vacant land that has, there's no buildings on top of it, would that also work on High Street? Not under the underutilized properties program. Okay. Um, yeah, not under, not under that program. Um, the state does have some programs we run up for, to create well, housing. Uh, in downtowns, but we don't qualify for that program. We're not big enough to be um, statutorily eligible. Um, so no, not to the best of my knowledge, not for vacant land. Unless, you, unless it's contaminated and you need to clean it up, then you can do that. But, but I'm just uh, thinking about the old Mr. Z's property that's been yeah. vacant for, I mean, I would think at least 20 years, if not, if not more than that. It's been, it was just before I moved to town, so it's been 22 or 23 years. As I, I, I was mentioned yeah. to the chairman, I've been, in, I'm commun I've been trying to be in communication with the owners of that property, uh, have been unsuccessful in reaching them by telephone, but now it's, it's definitely on our radar. We'd like to get it into other hands, or at least have them clean it up before we finish our project so that it's not a nice, it's not the chief ice we're on, on the street. Good. Anything else? We'll take this under advisement and um, figure out something for the next, next agenda probably. Does that sure. work? Okay. Great. Okay. So if anybody wants, if we want to take a look at this list and if there are any other priorities that we think we want to chase. Ed. So we have two meetings, Phil, to, to give you feedback on that. Well, I need to put them together. They, they, it's, they, they need to be compiled, and I'll start to draft on these. But if you guys have other programs, other ideas, um, by all means, 
suggest them. Uh, th these have the virtue that um, we've been working on all of these in the past. So when we say it's an express of interest, it's actually we can actually say we're interested in this, and this is what we've done so far. But right. uh, that doesn't mean that, that the list is exhausted. Right. But I'm, I'm just—I I thought I heard you mention that that we would have two more meetings to provide you with feedback yeah. to consider. Yep. Yeah. You okay. Will. Okay. All right. And if any questions arise as you, as you look at the list or maybe go online and look up the program, by all means, shoot me an email, give me a call. Great. Happy to, to talk about it. Okay? Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks. Sir. Moving on to administrative business, we have water, sewer, trash abatements. Um, the Superintendent of Public Works has submitted a list of water, sewer, trash abatements in the amount of $49,428.29 from the last billing cycle. Just for background, Michael, it's my understanding one of those is the outlier and, and is causing the big jump. Sure. Yeah. There's the uh, there's one account here on on the uh, list uh, from Tiger Corporation. The uh, it's probably more than about half of the half of the amount. Uh, they they receive their own water from their own water source, and we have a meter on that water source in order to determine the sewer charge. Because the sewer charge is 75 percent of your water, and we don't we don't uh, meter sewer, so we do meter uh, that uh, that side of their water so that we know what to charge for sewer. There was a wrong read in the meter for that month, and this wasn't picked up on the water side because they don't get charged water, so it ended up being an astronomical uh, sewer bill that they brought to the attention of the department when the bills were sent out. So uh, that's definitely uh, an outlier that the superintendent said uh, needed to be corrected. So that was about half of the list from there. Other than that, a lot of more you know wrong reads or or, yep. or similar type issues on that spreadsheet that he that he sends. So what's the pleasure of the board, Mr. Chairman? I move that we approve the uh, abatements as recommended by the DPW superintendent. I second that motion. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none. All's in favor. Aye. 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 Opposed. Five zero. Old and new business. Um, we have um, made an appointment for director of facilities. Um, Michael, do you want to fill us in on this, please? Sure, sure, Mr. Chair. I'll take this. But what I'm, I'm here to do tonight, uh, Mr. Chair, is to uh, notify the board of selectmen of an appointment for facilities director, uh, Brian Farragher. Uh, the, we had a search committee that was set up uh, with members of school, town, uh, a selectman, and uh, personnel, um, uh, uh, HR people, to try to kind of go through those resumes. We did receive quite a few. Um, they came up to a short list. And based on the progress of the short list, we've come up with uh, a, a recommendation uh, to uh, move forward with uh, Mr. Farragher, um, speaking with su superintendent of schools and um, he's in, in support of that uh, uh, appointment as well. Uh, and we had a meeting with this candidate and think that uh, he has, I think, the qualities that we're looking for right now to, to, to this job. Uh, he has uh, managed a lot of personnel uh, in policies and procedures and running a uh, facilities department. Um, and I, we think that's kind of what we're looking for at, at this point, too, uh, is to now that we've brought the department together and we've established the department and kind of addressed some, some major uh, uh, capital needs. I think at this point we'd kind of like to see the organization develop a little more now with some policies, procedures. Um, this gentleman here has had a lot of experience managing personnel within the organization and I think that's what we need to do, kind of a uh, capabilities assessment of our personnel, make sure everybody is is uh, in, in a, an appropriate function that serves them and serves the town, and also look to see what the future needs of that department will be and establish those policies and goals and standards uh, that we can now solidify the department after getting it together. So uh, we felt that uh, this person was a good uh, time for them to step in to uh, take on that role and uh, wish them well. So with the special legislation, I'm uh, uh, bound to notify the selectmen of that appointment and give the selectmen an opportunity to review and weigh in on, uh, on whether or not to uh, go forward. Any questions? What's the pleasure of the board? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that uh, the board waive its 15-day uh, notice period and make the appointment effective immediately. 
Second that motion. Motion made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 5 0. Thank you. Thank we look you. forward I to meeting you. Appreciate the help from uh, everyone involved that uh, helped go through, through all these candidates and get to this point. So we look forward to the next chapter in this department. So indeed. Be, should, Mr. Should be Chair, good. yes. I, I just want to uh, commend Mr. Ward and the search committee for this was a, um, a pretty decent turnaround time considering where we were uh, at the end of November with that position being vacant. They went through a lot of applications. Um, they have met regularly and uh, I'm just I'm happy that we're kind of back on our feet and we're going to have uh, somebody running that department again, a central figure for uh, for everyone. I, I don't know, he might, he might regret what he what he's stepping into because he's, you know, that that is not an easy job, but I, you know, commend you. I think you found a, a really good, uh, really good guy for the job and the speed at which you move the search. Um, I just want to thank you guys for that, all the hard work. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, yep. Another? No, I'll wait till you're done. Sorry. <laughs> um, in other personnel news, uh, I'll take this. We, we are uh, in final, final, final negotiations with the candidate for the cable director. Um, we will have news on that at our next meeting. I'm hoping it's good news. Yes, uh, Mr. Chair. Just so mostly likely, I'll be putting forward an appointment of a candidate at the next meeting. Um, have had a kind of a commitment from a candidate this week um, that they can work within the criteria that we have. Uh, and next week we're going to get together and meet and go over again expectations and, and goals for the position. Uh, and then that person can set their timeline uh, in their current uh, uh, life or their current position so that on March 3rd uh, we'll be able to publicly announce that and ask for the board's uh, feedback uh, on that position as well. So I think we're very close on getting that department going as well too. So it's a uh, good, good feeling. Great. Questions? Yep. Two things under old business, Mr. Please. Chairman. One, it may seem like a small one, but when we last hired a facility director, one of the things the board, I, I requested and the board uh, supported was um, finding the pictures that used to hang on town hall wall of all the uh, state representatives that have served Clinton from its beginning till recently. And during the remodel of the building, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago, time, time sort of flies when you're having fun. They were taken down and not, not put back up. But I think it's a significant part of uh, Clinton's history and background to see those pictures. They're not major, they're, they're small, uh, eight, not even eight by tens, they're smaller than that. But they used to, used to, used to see them on the hallway uh, going along. And I think it would be, considering that we've had the historic change that we've had in representation, I think it would be awesome to have those pictures hanging in the hallway of the town hall again. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to make that certainly not the number one priority for the new facility director, but make it clear that it's an expectation of the board that uh, that get done. And I'd like to make that as a motion and read it into the have it in the minutes yep. of the meeting. So I'll that second that motion. motion. Motion made and seconded. Um, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. And the second uh, issue is uh, the, the parking situation in town. Uh, I know we're, we're trying to make headway. I know it's a comprehensive problem. I think what's go going on down at Oxford Court is awesome. I've, I've, the only time you can tell what's going on with parking is after a snowstorm. Yep. And Oxford Court has turned around, well, that, uh, I'm sorry, the Church Street parking lot municipal parking lot has been turned around and it's a it's clear after a storm it's available for uh, people doing business during the day to park down there uh, we have a, a serious problem over here on the Walnut Street parking lot uh, I understand that we ask people to park there during the storm and and then vacate there's cars there five days later and there's a 12-hour parking regulation already in effect at that parking lot and I'd like to request that the police department be informed that we're concerned with that situation and ask that you can, they, they can never clear the parking lot. It's full of cars that don't even move. And um, it's a 12 hour limit and I, I'd like to communicate to the police department that we need more enforcement there. And the second part of the parking that I wanna bring up is 
uh, downtown business employees, one specifically, their employees park right out here, right in front of this door at 7 o'clock in the morning and walk down to the street to their place of business and stay there all day. This is on this side of the street. I think it's 15-minute 15 15 minute parking. 15 minutes. I'm pretty sure it's 15 minute parking. 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. On this side, and I think even beyond that, I think there's there's limitations. And then half the on the other side is maybe two hours. I don't know, but I, I've I've been out here waiting for an appointment at five uh, at seven in the morning and watched the cars pull up right 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 smack in front of this building, and I go by at two o'clock in the afternoon, and those same cars are there, and they park all the way down Church Street on the right hand side, and I know there's limited time. On, on that section of the street too. It might be two hours, but I'd like to ask for enhanced enforcement of those two, those two specific areas because it's abusive to the, the people that want to do business downtown. They, the, the, the people parking in front of town hall can park over in the municipal lot mm -hmm. if the people that are parking there for five days straight move on and, and make some vacancies there. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, re I really would like the police department to step up enforcement in those two areas. Coincidentally, I met with the chief and the DPW superintendent this afternoon because I, I thought we might want to talk about this and I had some frustrations of my own, particularly about the rest of Walnut Street, which is you know our marquee street right now. We, it's the last one we did, uh, one of the last ones. And you know we asked, on one hand, we asked people to get off the street um, so that we could clear some lots, clear some parking spots and those who did were left with no spots. Those who stayed weren't ticketed. There's, there was still a car there this afternoon that's been there since before the storm. So mm -hmm. I did share my frustrations and yeah, it's, it's a process. I was assured that more tickets were given out this past storm than you know, the, the one prior. And um, while there were some challenges to getting some cars towed, we agreed that we have to keep stepping up that game. Um, so, um, Mr. Ward, if you want to pass along uh, the board's uh, continuing uh, uh, <laughs> yes, frustration and uh, emphasis that this is something because I also met with Mr. Duffy and looking forward to the spring and the summer and when downtown is going to be reopened, parking enforcement was another issue that is going to be paramount to making that work. Um, so I, I know it's, it might be a bit of a culture change. Um, uh, or just a, a different way of thinking. But I think everybody agrees that when we do this and we show people that when you're breaking the law that there's going to be consequences to it, uh, better things happen. And the things everyone wants to happen, we, we, we're not looking to deny anybody uh, their livelihood or, or a place to park. There are plenty of places to park, but we, we put those restrictions in place for a reason. And um, if we don't enforce them, it's not, it's not worth anything. So um, thank you for bringing it up. You're not alone. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, I'm going to call the tie over there. You're next. <laughs> well, I, is, can we, at a future meeting, revisit the possibility, or is it a possibility to have a temporary contract, like dedicated resource that could deal with parking enforcement? Um, so what I mean by that is it, it would just be, I don't know if, if we would employ them, if they would come um, twice a week or once a week or three times a week, whatever we would want. but. Their only goal would be to walk around these areas where we're concerned about their, these parking issue, issues and just enforce it. And I, it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be consistent every day. But I, I think if there was just the threat that that people really feared that they were going to get ticketed more, I think we would have more people cooperating with the with the parking rules. I'm open to considering anything. At this point, I've never been told that we, it's a manpower problem. I've never been told that we don't have the, the, the resources to handle this. Because I said today, if you need more resources, we, I was talking to Chris about, you know, he might be looking at some equipment that could double at the landfill and, you know, helping with sidewalks. So if it's a resources problem, I'd love to hear that. So far, I have not been told that we don't have the people to do this. So I, I would love to just have that threat going all the time and not have to bring in extra help. If we don't have the people to do it, that's one thing. I don't know if it's a collective bargaining thing. I know that's come up in the past if, if we're farming that out. 
Well, again, I'm open to everything. Yeah, but I, I, I'm just because we, we seem to be revisiting this. I mean, this seems to be the third or fourth time we've been discussing this, at least since I've been a selectman. So I can only imagine that it's been going on Indeed. for longer. And, I, I, it, and I'm in favor of, you know, whatever we think is the best plan. But I, I just we, I think we just need to start thinking about something more than just repeatedly voicing our frustration. Um, so I, I, it's that's all. I, Thank you. I, I just would like you know maybe that maybe we can have somebody from the police department here at a future meeting and we can start talking about some what additional steps um, you know w what we can do or because we I, I forget who said it but I mean with the we want to hit the ground running when the yep. down, when the revitalization program is is finished and I'd like to have I'd like to have something. Um, some sort of a strategy in play be, before we, you know, be, be, before we finish that that project. I agree. It is certainly at the top of my list to talk about the next chief with, um, talk with the next chief about. So, um, yeah, we'll stick a pin in this, I guess. Um, and well, we will communicate to the. Police we will department. communicate. Yeah, as far sure, as getting sure, outside uh, help. Well, on the street parking lot. Yes. And. Uh, um, Brown, the, especially Brown. this side of Church Street. Yes, um, it's. We've harped on this a lot for a long time, and uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, nope. Matt was waiting. For yeah, yeah well, I didn't forget. <laughs> uh, so two things. One, you know, to Eddie's point, there has been progress with uh, the ticketing and, and the towing. So, so you know, this we're still not at square one. And um, secondly, is it possible to maybe present a letter to the business that you're referring to as a friendly letter, just saying going forward, you know, it's very likely your car is, you know, your employees' vehicles are going to be ticketed or towed. And you know, when you look at the distance between where they're where they're parking here and where the Church Street Municipal Lot is, because right. where there's not as much inventory at Walnut Street. If it's needed for anything up here, it's less likely someone's going to park down at church to come up here. Whereas if, you know, those employees park down there, it still leaves adequate, you know, supply. Right. Um, I do want to agree with what Matt said is we're not at square one. The, the talking about this, I've noticed a dramatic change in what's available at seven o'clock in the morning on um, the, in the church street lot. It, it's dramatically improved. It's available for the, these people that are abusing the 15-minute or two-hour parking restrictions close to downtown. And it's not that much further of a walk to park down there and come up. It, they just need to be encouraged. And the only I, we've tried positive reinforcement. Now uh, it, it is time to be ticketing them strongly and regularly until that Walnut Street lot turns over. And uh, um, the Church Street in, in front of Town Hall is available for people trying to do business at Town Hall, not people working at a business all day long. So uh, I, I do think we can. We don't have to wait for a new chief. And I, I no. I don't think I, it's never been said to me that we have a resource problem. Uh, if it is, then we'll, let's let's hear that and address it. But in, in between now and then. I think the police department has the capability of en enhancing the enforcement uh, in these areas that we've been talking about. Yeah, I don't think we, for all the complaints about parking in town, I, I, I still maintain that we don't have a parking problem. We have a laziness problem that, that right. you know, these people are just used to getting the way, things the way they want. And it, the only way to fix that is, is through enforcement. And it, it's, they're breaking the law that we have to start looking at it that way. It, this isn't like, Oh gosh, you know what's the big deal? Well, if we want that downtown to succeed, if we want people to have parking available to go to businesses, to to go to the movies, to eat, to do business at town hall, and we're not enforcing these laws, then shame on us and shame on everybody. So, that what we stressed this afternoon was um, uh, getting better at it, uh, preventing a, a unified front, so that it wasn't like oh gosh, you know. This department's doing this. This department's doing that. It's the town. This is a Clinton thing. This isn't a police thing, or a DPW thing. This is or a board of selectmen thing. This is a Clinton thing. It's a priority for the town, 
And I think everybody needs to get on board the way we've been talking about it, because the way we've been stressing, like Ed said, and Bill's been here longer than me, but since I've been on the board, you know, we've been told, carrot, 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 no stick. I don't know what to do anymore, so it's working. I think we just need to keep doing it. And Chris is, um, to his credit, is um, they're constantly changing the ways that they're uh, working on snow removal, and they're learning every storm. So um, High Street's looking a lot better. There was some equipment malfunctions um, that hurt the sidewalk removal that he knows about, but um, I'm encouraged by what they're doing and moving forward there too. But yeah, we can't, I can't stress the enforcement thing enough. And yes, I am frustrated. So I appreciate the board's support in this matter. Any other old new business? Committee reports? Mr. Chairman, I just want oh, to bring please. up something. We had brought up before that nobody should be applying for any application for any license permits or anything else if there's outstanding uh, taxes, okay, right? In your packet tonight, you'll notice somebody's applied to the Zoning Board of Appeals, okay? As of January 6th, that certain person owes us $48,113.14. Now, unless he miraculously dropped a bag of money off, I'm going to double check with Mr. Kippridge in the morning. But I believe it's still outstanding because this is the case. We've got approximately 10 pieces of property we filed in Worcester Superior Court that we're waiting to hear on. And that is one of them that he had filed an application for. But I believe we, we talked about this before. I believe we have to bring it to town meeting that anybody goes to apply for any application for a permit or anything, taxes should be paid. Mm -hmm. I mean, all the other taxpayers pay their taxes. It's not fair to them. So I just want to bring it to the board's attention. Is there any recourse before town meeting for this? I think you know we're, we're we're putting that bylaw on for town meeting where we would give the departments that enforcement authority, but I don't know if we have anything in lieu of that beforehand. So. Even if they go to go to the application, they could just show the taxes are paid. Just ask them. I mean that's a substantial amount of money. Indeed. And this is this is a piece of property we've been having problems with down Grove Street for a while. This is something not new. I, I agree. I mean, we we should be that is something we should be checking. If people do, if people owe the town money. Yeah. Well, yeah. They, we, I'm just we, saying, if 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 the if the bylaw is not in place yet, do we have any mechanism to actually do this? I mean, I agree it's a good idea and it's got my support, but the town hasn't voted on it yet. So, can we? It, so, is it is it each um, board's discretion to, or or do they not have the ability to like to deny somebody? Um, a hearing or whatever if they you know is that what we're talking about that they yeah we can look into it and i'll talk with the town treasurer as well uh on you know where this this uh property owner stands in, in their process if it's tax title or where things are at uh and maybe we can pursue that avenue as well too mr chairman yes. if i may yep. could we ask that a letter be sent from this board to the zoning board of appeals identifying this piece of property and the tax title issue with it Bring it to their for attention. their information that's fine with uh, me and i think this applicant also will be going before the uh planning board as mm -hmm. well so we could send notice to both mm -hmm. both Great. boards yes do we need a motion for that do we need a motion for that so move mr chairman second so, moved and second any discussion all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Bosno. All right. Thank you. Any other old and new business? Committee reports. Um, the town surplus, surplus subcommittee met briefly before the meeting. Um, nothing major to report other than we are, we this, we've taken the last few meetings to kind of briefly talk about all the property. Our strategy now moving forward is going to be to focus on one piece of property at a time and get a solid plan put together um so i can try to uh, summarize our um our courses of action for all the properties but the, the one that we're going to focus on now is going to be the uh jeans auto um down on the corner of high street and water street so uh, i'll be up i'll be updating you as we meet but the next couple meetings will be focused on on, on that property thank you any of the committee reports? The cable committee's uh, scheduling a meeting, meeting date to be determined um, to go over uh, goals and objectives for the new director and also to consider some capital purchases to fix the lousy TV picture I'm looking at right now. So 
Um, more to come on that. Um, and I think that's all. Any other business? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So move, Mr. Chairman. Second. second. Motion made and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, none. Um, our next meeting will be uh, back on Wednesday, March 3rd. Um, all's in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 5-0. Thank you and good night.